The movie opens with a beautiful view of the city of Venice, Italy, where Cyrus, the leader of a group known as an international thief, is invited to an auction. They are planning to pull off two major thefts. The members of Cyrus's team are among the participants, with some having specific roles to play according to the plan. They aim to steal the famous painting by Van Gogh in London, disguising their plan as an elaborate and artificial scheme to target a renowned artist named N8, who designs special and high-priced NFTs. N8 is attending an auction event in Venice to showcase a special NFT, a three-dimensional portrait of a mask crafted from 482 cameras. This mask can create an NFT with 30 seconds of content from the auction event, including the moment of bidding and the buyer itself. In the midst of it all, Abby Gladwell, an Interpol agent and a former fling of Cyrus, is relentlessly pursuing Cyrus and his crew, somewhat getting in their way. However, in the end, she fails to apprehend them as they manage to escape. The team members orchestrate the hostage situation involving N8, while Cyrus declares that the price of the stolen painting is continuously increasing, and they plan to sell it on the black market after the theft for $20 million to be able to purchase N8's NFT. After N8 is taken hostage, the price of his NFT skyrockets to roughly $89 million. N8 decides to celebrate this success with Cyrus's team after they promise to give him a share of $27 million from the NFT sale. After this, Abby has the evidence and documents against Denton, proving that he is involved in theft as a fellow criminal of Cyrus's team. In reality, Denton was seen at the auction ceremony, and Abby correctly identified that his cane was fake. He was accused of fraud at the auction event, where he made a fake $10 million offer. When he couldn't afford such money to cover his expenses, the conditions for extradition as a criminal to the United States were in place. Instead of arresting all members of Cyrus's group, Abby decides to put pressure on them to help Interpol apprehend a billionaire named Lars Jorgensen. This decision was made by Abby's superior, Commander Huxley, and Abby has to negotiate with the team leader, her ex-boyfriend Cyrus, for this task. Lars Jorgensen intends to collaborate with a hacker group named Leviathan, to manipulate the European stock market significantly and make billions in profits. He is responsible for causing a massive flood in Europe, disrupting airline routes, leading to the crash of a New Zealand plane where 189 people lost their lives. Now, Huxley has hired a spy named Arthur Tigg to infiltrate Lars' organization to gather more information. Since Leviathan team is requesting $500 million, in the form of untraceable gold bars, Jurgensen is set to facilitate the transfer of this gold from a vault in England to Leviathan Bank in Zurich via a commercial aircraft. Given that Huxley cannot stop this transfer due to its legal nature, he has tasked Cyrus and his team to intercept the gold transfer to Leviathan, but Cyrus knows Jurgensen is a dangerous man and playing his cards against him won't be easy. However, Abby assures them that the security of all team members and Cyrus himself will be maintained during this operation. As part of the agreement, Cyrus requests Abby to join his team so that he can provide the necessary cover as an Interpol agent. Abby and Cyrus discuss the operation details and the repercussions if things don't go according to plan, with Interpol possibly not to come after to Cyrus and his crew members. Tomorrow, Abby and Cyrus will brief the group on an operation involving the secure transfer of 10 tons of gold from Heathrow Airport in England to be then transported under heavy security to Zurich with fully armed guards. This hefty amount of gold is set to be loaded inside a Sky Suisse A380 passenger plane. That must be intercepted. The group concludes that the only way to steal the gold is to act before reaching the destination while the plane is still en route. To achieve this, they need a private jet with a skilled pilot to position it directly beneath the passenger aircraft. This pilot, who is part of the team, will be Camilla, and will guide them so that the hacker of the group can use a jammer to manipulate the radar signals of the control tower. This manipulation will create the illusion of a drone in the path of the Sky Suisse A380, diverting it from its original course. Misun asserts, 
that the likelihood of such a maneuver succeeding is close to zero, but Abby claims she knows someone along the Brussels flight route who can help them if they divert the flight path to that airway. Meanwhile, a spy employed by Huxley within the Jorgensen organization is apprehended by Lars Jorgensen's men in a location in Northern Ireland. Although this arrest disrupts their plans and timings, the group ultimately manages to synchronize themselves in time with the scheduled flight of the desired aircraft. Cyrus knows a private jet owner named Molson, who is an art collector. In order to borrow Molson's private jet, Cyrus offers him to create a special and personal NFT him. However, after Abby reveals she is an Interpol agent, Molson agrees to lend them his jet. The jet comes with some exciting features, including a remote control with interesting capabilities. Using a large monitor under the jet, they can display special signs and messages. Following this incident, the team members get busy with their work, each honing their expertise to be able to carry out their tasks flawlessly on the appointed day. Later, Abby, along with Cyrus, travel to Brussels to meet with Harry, who works in the observation tower, to persuade him to collaborate. Although initially hesitant, Harry quickly agrees to collaborate upon Cyrus's offer of half a million dollars. Abby advises against paying him, but Cyrus insists on covering the expenses for furthering the operation. Meanwhile, Huxley contacts Abby, expressing the need to meet and sharing some news with her. They meet in the park, and Huxley informs them that our spy, Arthur Teague, has been killed. They realize the operation is no longer going according to plan, and they need to be ready 10 days earlier than expected. Despite Cyrus's reluctance, Huxley warns him sternly that refusal is not an option, threatening repercussions if he doesn't comply. Cyrus looks at Abby and says, I'm doing this only for you, not Huxley, and I will do my best to ensure that team members are ready on time, and assures her that he will do his best and inform the team members to get ready sooner. As the team members are engrossed in their work, they learn about a massive flood occurring in Europe. They uncover that behind these events is no one but the cruel Jorgensen, who values nothing but money and lacks any sense of humanity or conscience. Cyrus then urges the team members to reconsider their involvement in the risky operation and leave. However, they stand by his side, reassuring him that they will support him until the end, pledging their allegiance. The team members make their final efforts and are almost ready for the big day. They conceal the jet with a layer of metal to escape radar detection and remain completely hidden to avoid any trouble. Finally, on the anticipated day, Abby and Cyrus are prepared to board the plane. A glimpse inside the aircraft shows Cyrus alongside Denton, Misan, and the rest of the team members all set for the operation. Among them are individuals like Cormac and Donnell, who are likely to cause trouble for Cyrus and his team during the mission. Additionally, a view of 10-ton gold bars tightly secured under high-security measures is shown, emphasizing the intense protection around them. When Abby and Cyrus finally felt a sense of relief after all their efforts, Luke called Cyrus and informed him that he was backing out of continuing their collaboration in the operation, assuring Cyrus that it wasn't worth the risk. This moment was a letdown for them. Meanwhile, as we see Camilla boarding Molson Advanced Jet, our charming hacker on his laptop manages to identify individuals on the plane, working for Jurgensen. Camilla, the pilot extraordinaire, brings the jet to take off. Camilla and Magnus get ready to execute the operation on time. Since Luke drops out of the mission and his task was to boost the signal, Abby volunteers to plant a signal booster in the VIP restroom. However, she makes a mistake while carrying out her mission, and the booster device falls, leading to a separation. She asks for Cyrus's help, but on the other side, our buddy Donal realizes that there is some commotion and heads to the restroom to eavesdrop. Abby's reaction in this whole mix-up is quite cool. She pretends they are having sex with Cyrus, making a commotion. As Camilla approaches the passenger plane, due to air pressure and weather conditions, some of the cameras installed on the jet come loose. Despite the challenges, she manages to bring herself underneath the passenger plane to make the link and relay the signal to the radar. 
However, due to some delay, Harry's colleague notices that a jet is flying under the passenger plane on the radar. He informs Harry about it. However, Harry says, you're making a mistake. Why don't you respect my decisions? At that moment, the signal jammer device works correctly, and the jet is no longer visible on the radar. Harry says, see, I told you that you were wrong. All these events unfold while Abby and Cyrus are still piecing together components to ensure the booster facilitates problem resolution. Ultimately, after much effort, the job is completed, and right then, Cyrus comes over and kisses Abby. Cyrus has truly chosen the perfect place to kiss his old love. Let's move on. When the necessary conditions are met, Harry communicates with the passenger plane pilot that, due to bad weather, they need to change course and head towards Cortina. At the same time, he informs Camilla that it's time to release the drone from the jet until its signal becomes active and the drone is seen on radar as a passenger airplane, enabling them both to switch places at once. In the meantime, colleagues of Jurgensen are getting ready to take practical action as they realize the airplane is taking a different route. Magnus waits for Denton, who has disguised himself as a respiratory patient, to hand him the oxygen capsule. Donald and his other colleagues swiftly arm themselves with their specialized weapons to defend themselves. Meanwhile, Magnus heads to where the metal bars are stored at the bottom of the plane. Interestingly, although security personnel were initially spotted guarding the area, they are nowhere to be seen when Magnus arrives. Undeterred, Magnus prepares to access the vault that using the airlock system for protection. As he enters the compartment to crack the safe, the clock is ticking. Simultaneously, Jurgensen's group launches an attack. Donald is planning to hijack the airplane through pressure and hostage-taking, creating chaos on the plane. In the midst of the chaos, Abby and Cyrus engage in a fierce confrontation with members of Jurgensen's team. Finally, Magnus succeeds in opening the vault while Cyrus intercepts Donald before he can harm Abby, effectively incapacitating him. As Cyrus approaches the vault, he is caught off guard by Cormac, who points a gun at him. Meanwhile, due to adverse weather conditions, the pilot is forced to make a difficult landing in Cortina. Despite the challenges, he manages to land the plane successfully. At the same moment, Camilla lands the jet right behind the passenger plane. Cormac and the rest of Jurgensen's team successfully apprehend Magnus, Abby, and Cyrus. Cormac then contacts Jurgensen and tells the situation for him, but Jurgensen said, bring the gold along with them to me within an hour. Next, Cormac apprehends Camilla as she steps off the jet, informing her collaborator that she doesn't need Magnus anymore and get rid of him. Despite Camilla's objections about the weight limit, Cormac forced his way to Tuscany with 10 tons of gold, along with Cyrus, Abby, and Camilla as the pilot. Inside the cockpit, Camilla skillfully maneuvers the jet in circular motions to dislodge metal pieces on the jet's surface to make it trackable and traceable. At that moment, Harry spots the jet on his radar. In the next scene, Magnus elegantly disarms the one who was supposed to kill him with a graceful spin. Despite disarming him and rendering the gun useless by dropping it to the ground, Magnus escapes. However, the assailant tries to shoot him from behind, but the gun misfires allowing Magnus to fire back at him before making a run for it. Meanwhile, Stefano, Huxley's colleague, informs him that a jet is heading towards Tuscany, the residence of Jorgensen. He advises contacting NATO and sending a message to intercept, stating they cannot risk Jorgensen getting his hands on the gold. The decision is made while he already knows there's a suspicion that Abby, his associate, might be on board the jet. The leader of the Leviathan group meets with Jorgensen to discuss the gold transfer terms, with Jorgensen stating that they will arrive soon. Simultaneously, two NATO jets move towards Camilla's jet, requesting identification, threatening to fire missiles if not identified. Abby and Cyrus, with the help of remote controls, create a distraction to engage Cormac and his men. Abby then assists using the remote control displaying a message on the monitor behind the jet showcasing non-combatant hostages present on board to deter the NATO jets from engaging with their aircraft. As Camilla is forced to maneuver the jet in a completely opposite manner for a moment, the NATO jets receiving orders from their superiors. 
refrain from engaging with her jet, allowing them to disengage from the scene. Later, Abby and Cyrus managed to escape from Cormac and his men with the help of the remote. They open Jet up for Cormac, and that's how they take him out. Joining forces with Camilla, as their jet is rapidly descending due to the injury she sustained in the encounter with the Jurgensen's men, Camilla has lost control of the jet, which is now plummeting. Abby and Cyrus take over control and successfully prevent the crash. However, due to the intense pressure of the air, a piece of metal connected to the jet's surface detaches, causing damage and necessitating an emergency landing right in the heart of Jurgensen's estate in the Tuscany region. Right after, Jurgensen immediately approaches with gun and asks, which one of you is the Interpol agent? But the leader of Leviathan catches on and declares, I'm not cooperating. Jurgensen fires a shot at her, then asks again, are you willing to collaborate? She says no and takes down the leader of the Leviathan group. At that moment, Cyrus step up and states, I'm the agent, as he aimed to protect Abby with his own sacrifice. Before Jorgensen can take down Cyrus, the Italian police show up, and everyone is forced to surrender. Simultaneously, with the help of intact cameras on the jet surface, the scene of Jorgensen committing the crime and killing the Leviathan leader, with the assistance of Misun, is displayed to the police, ultimately resulting in Jurgensen's arrest. In the next scene, Abby discovers through Stefano that NATO's order to attack the jet was under Huxley's command. Enraged, she strikes him and hands over her police badge, resigning. Later, she and Cyrus, along with the rest of the team, board a boat. Several weeks pass, and we see Abby and Cyrus in a car together when Cyrus unveils a surprise. He reveals... We actually stole the gold. Beforehand, we painted iron pieces gold and with Magnus's help, timely substituted them with the real gold. Luke, indeed, was executing this task in a secured area and never left the group. Abby asked, so what did Huxley get? Cyrus replied, he got nothing but some iron. In the final scene, Luke hands a controller of the package containing 10 tons of gold to Cyrus, who instead, credits Abby with this honor. The package emerges from underwater after she pressing a button and everyone celebrates. Abby and Cyrus kiss and hug, concluding the film.